Dom Draco for here, proud to be reviewing perhaps the greatest and most hyped Pokemon games ever released, at least for the handheld consoles, Gold and Silver. This is taking a good step back in time, almost ten years ago. Why the sudden nostalgia? Well, the US release date for the new Pokemon games, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, is March 14th of 2010. From the Japanese footage I've seen, these will be the most stunningly scenic of any Pokemon game yet known, not to mention the most customizable. If you haven't seen any game footage, definitely check it out. Like Fire Red and Leaf Green, these new games are remakes, but not simply exact copies with improved graphics. From what I've seen and heard, it's almost like Gold and Silver combined with Red and Blue. Both the Johto and the Kanto storylines, plus tons of side quests. And yeah, I already have my copy of Soul Silver pre-ordered, probably to be delivered during spring break. After the surprisingly lame Generation 4 games, they finally decided to go back to games that were actually popular. Not to mention very well designed, which is probably why they were so popular. Given the success of the first generation of Pokemon, red, green, blue, and yellow, it was only natural to create follow-up games. Same basic gameplay, but with new settings, new characters, and of course, new Pokemon. As with every new generation, the new Pokemon were slipped discreetly into popular media, primarily the TV show and movies. Well, it was discreet for the second generation, the rest, not so much. Perhaps the strangest example of this is in the very first episode of the show. Ash sees an elegant, rainbow-like bird flying through the sky. This was long before Silver and Gold came out. Eventually, we learn that this was a new legendary bird, Ho-Oh, who for some reason keeps following Ash. Togepi also appeared fairly early in this series, as well as Marill. In the second movie, Lugia made its first appearance, and then later on in the Johto season there was a mother and baby Lugia, which was cute, but confusing. Why couldn't these Lugia talk? The one in the movie could. I don't know. But back to the games themselves. Since it was only the second generation, nobody knew exactly what to expect. All they knew was the original premise, the original characters, and the original setting now known as Kanto, but back then it didn't really matter what it was called, because there was no real need to distinguish it. After the release of Silver and Gold, we knew we could trust Pokemon to always have something new to offer. Until Generation 4, but I won't go there. Not only were you able to explore the beautiful Johto region, you could also travel to Kanto and fight all the gym leaders, making it the only generation with 16 badges. It isn't nearly as extensive as in Red, Blue, and Yellow, and, being set five years later, some locations have drastically changed, but it's still a fun little extra. As for the Pokémon themselves, I'm not terribly impressed by their design. The starter Pokémon are okay, although the fully evolved starters aren't quite as artistically detailed as the other generations. It's also kind of weird how they all evolve at different levels. But that's just me nitpicking. It does add more variety, and you have to think more carefully about which starter you choose. Evolve early to the second evolution and wait for the final evolution, or wait for the second evolution and have the earlier final evolution. Legendaries? Awesome. I really like the fact that they have a story that links all of them together. It makes them more mystic, like mythical creatures rather than just endangered animals. While Pokemon aren't too intimidating, you have your usual Pidgeys, Rattatas, Go Geodudes, and of course Zubat. I hate Zubat. So annoying. And there's some new Pokemon too. Wild Pokemon vary by game, some only in silver, some only in gold. Much more so than in Ruby and Sapphire. I don't know much about Diamond and Pearl. I preferred silver, since in yellow, which was the only other game I had, you weren't able to catch Meowth. No Meowth in gold, either. Only silver. As I've mentioned numerous times, my favorite part of any Pokemon game is the music. Obviously the music in the game is rather poor quality, but still amazingly well written. The only thing I didn't like about Fire Red and Leaf Green was the remix of the original music. 
just wasn't anything special. I really hope Heart Gold and Soul Silver have good music. If you really like Pokemon music and want to hear some great remixes, there are plenty on YouTube, although my favorite remixer is Poke Remix Studio. I strongly recommend you check out his YouTube channel. I really wish he worked on the actual game music. Anyway, Generation 2 music, excellent. The most annoying aspect ever to be introduced was in Generation 2, and that... Ugh, the freaking legendary beasts. Entei, Raikou, and Suicune. Such a royal pain in the ass. Running as soon as you encounter them, and nearly impossible to track down. This extremely irritating battle style was, for reasons unknown to me, carried over to Latias and Latios. And then, the legendary birds in Platinum. And this doesn't mean I hate the beasts themselves. I think they're great designs, and they have the best backstory of any legendaries. If you don't know what that is, it's explained briefly in the game, but you can find a more descriptive version on Wikipedia. Okay, now I want to jump forward a bit to talk about Crystal. This was a major turning point in Pokemon history. The addition of a female main character, out-of-battle Pokemon animation, and the Battle Tower are all concepts that stuck. Although, for some reason, the out-of-battle animation disappeared in Ruby and Sapphire, and was brought back in Emerald. Although seemingly small, another seemingly small addition was legendary battle music. It does make sense that super powerful Pokemon should have more epic music, but this was the first introduction. And as much as I hate Platinum, the music is awesome. The legendary's music is all different, each beast having a different battle theme. Dialga Palkia, Giratina, Heatran, Iself Mesprit Uxi, Arceus, and they keep the battle music for the Regis, which, if you remember from Generation 3, was totally epic. So to wrap up, Silver and Gold were my personal favorites, with everything a Pokemon game needs. Cool Pokemon, a cool setting, cool characters, and cool music. Generation 2 comes slightly behind Colosseum as most engaging, with a score of 9.5 out of 10. Colosseum, of course, is 9.9 .9 out of 10, if not 9.99, because it's awesome. I really hate that my gold and silver games stopped working. They can't hold save files anymore. Which is really too bad. I could play them over and over. Well, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy Heart Gold and Soul Silver as much as I will.